quick thing that I'd like to remind you of right now is that you don't have to be perfect to be lovable. Isn't that great news? Because if you had to be perfect to be lovable, none of us would ever find love. And in fact, it's even in those imperfections and what we might consider to be weaknesses or flaws or those sides of ourselves that we don't consider to be as polished or as perfect as we might want them to be that actually makes us relatable and in some ways safe for other people to show their real selves and even lovable. And so that has to do with agreement number four as we've been going through the four agreements and that is always do your best but your best does not mean perfection. We're gonna talk about that a little bit more today. My name is Michelle Marchant Johnson. I'm with Love Life Coaching and I'm here to help you be that woman of high value that meets and attracts your high quality man. And I hope you've been following along with my series of the four agreements. And this is agreement number four. And agreement number four is always do your best. Now, just as a refresher, of the first three agreements. The first three agreements are be impeccable with your word, don't take anything personally, don't make assumptions, and now number four is always do your best. And these are from Don Miguel Ruiz's wonderful book, The Four Agreements. And I'm just kind of giving my own interpretation of this book, my understanding and specifically relating it to love, dating, and relationships. Because as I recently reread this book, I thought how powerful it was and thought that this might be very helpful and useful to visit these concepts from this perspective. So I really love this concept of always doing your best and keeping in mind that your best does not have to be perfection. And in fact, um, Don says that doing your best and putting the first three agreements into action and doing the best that you can is a key to happiness in your life, satisfaction in your life, but that they don't have to be practiced perfectly. In fact, he says, the first three agreements will only work if you do your best. Don't expect that you will always be able to be impeccable with your word. We try, but we're not going to be perfect. Your routine habits are too strong and firmly rooted in your mind, but you can do your best. Don't expect that you will never take anything personally. Just do your best. Don't expect that you will never make another assumption, but you certainly can do your best. He says, by doing your best, the habits of misusing your word, taking things personally, and making assumptions will become weaker and less frequent with time. You don't need to judge yourself, feel guilty, or punish yourself if you cannot keep these agreements. If you're doing your best, you will feel good about yourself, even if you still make assumptions, take take things personally, and still are not impeccable with your word. He says, you have to honor the man or woman that you are. And part of that is accepting yourself and your own humanity and taking care of yourself and doing the best that you can at all times, recognizing that your best is going to be different from moment to moment and from day to day. Now, this is not about letting yourself off the hook. And this is not about saying, well, I'm I'm just going to be who I am. There is this there is this intention with this book that you are going to seek to be more impeccable with your word. You are going to seek to not take things personally. You are going to continue to seek to not make assumptions. You're going to continue through awareness and through developing your skills and your and your um, strength in these areas to make progress but you're going to be you're going to not judge yourself or criticize yourself or not be willing to forgive yourself if you fall short. And I think this is really important um, to recognize in a relationship 
that we first start with being accepting of ourselves, and that's part of what allows us to love and accept other people. He also says, um, when you do your best, you're going to live your life intensely. I think that's interesting. He says, you're going to be productive. You're going to be good to yourself. And I believe being good to yourself actually models for other people how you want to be treated. And it also sends a message to the universe that you're worthy of being treated well. So you're going to, going to be good to yourself. You will be giving to yourself. You'll be giving yourself to your family, to, to your community, to everything. And the action itself of doing your best will make you intensely happy. He says, when you do your best, you take action. So like I said, this is not about letting yourself off the hook. Doing your best is taking the action because you love it, not because you're expecting a reward. Um, it's in the action itself. And he's also saying when you're doing your best, you honor what is right for you. When you when you feel like it's a no, it's a no. When you feel like it's a yes, it's a yes. So in other words, when you're doing your best, you're in tune with what is right for you and you're able to say yes to what feels yes to you and you're able to say no to what doesn't. He also talks about taking care of your physical body, taking care of your soul, taking care of yourself in a way that allows you to not only do your best, but to be your best. Because as you do this, then you're going to be able to invite in and attract the kind of person that is going to be able to see the real you and who's going to be attracted to who you really are without any false pretense or without pretending to be someone else. So I love this concept of doing your best. And I do believe that most people out there, with the exception perhaps of really narcissistic kind of people or people with, you know, disorders, sociopaths, that kind of thing, most people are doing their best with the knowledge and understanding that they know. But as we grow and as we develop as human beings, as we are committed to our own self-growth and understanding and awareness about what it takes to be successful in communicating and in relationships, and as we put into place these four agreements that we've been discussing, I believe that can be a part of it, that allows us to transform what is possible in terms of our experiences in relationships and to have better, healthier, stronger, more satisfying relationships. And that's the whole point of exploring the four agreements through the lens of dating, love, and relationships. I really do really like this book. And like I said, I have no affiliate uh, association with this book or anything like that. But I've read it several times, and like I said, when I read it most recently, I just thought that it really has some principles and ideas that I think are very powerful to apply in our lives, and particularly in our relationships. And I hope that this has been helpful to you. I hope if you've missed video three, two, or one, <laughs> that you'll go back and review them. Good to start with one and go from there because they kind of build upon each other and they're all kind of intertwined and related. But I think that if you can seek to do these things and always do your best, I think it really does have the power to transform your experience in your dating life and can help you to have the kind of relationship that you dream of. So I'm sending you love, blessings, and holding that vision for you to have exactly what you want in terms of your love life. And I'm looking forward to connecting with you soon. I'd love to hear your thoughts or any questions. Please feel free to leave a comment. Um, if you like this video, click the like button and please subscribe to my you subscribe to my YouTube channel as well, because I'd love to stay connected with you in this way as well. Thank you so much for watching, sending you love and blessings. Bye for now.